it's Wednesday night again. And the phone is actually working. Right. And I have, yeah, we have everything going except for I just came unplugged, but that's a minor issue at this point in time. So, um, yeah. And so you guys get Mary and I tonight. No yes. special guest stars. Just but, us. But I feel like we got this topic. Yeah. It's an important topic. Right. It's one that's actually one of the most asked for topics. So we're proud to bring this to you guys tonight. Yeah. But of course, as always, let's talk about these great sponsors here behind us. So, um, Titan Sticks, I, I talked to Alicia last night and she's kind of gearing up for expo and She's got some awesome things playing up there. I'm sure you're going to see Mary and I in our booth a lot. Um, she's been giving us the great ideas for our, sure. our studio, too. So we talked a little bit about that this week. And so we have big things coming for the studio as soon as I get my basement ready to go. One of these days. I guess that's actually the plan it's for this weekend. Along. Yeah, it's really not. But we're going to do this weekend. That, that's the, the main focus for this weekend. Of course, Lane Value Sires, um, he came out to yep. the Lucky One sale last week, and uh, we had a great time, had a great visit with him. Um, hogs sold well. They looked great. So if you guys, and he has his appreciation sale um, Friday yeah. in his AI clinic on um, Saturday, and then he has his virtual open house on Monday, I believe. So, so busy, busy time. Right, yeah. Days, so, so, yeah. If don't you don't have out. anything going on yeah. on Friday, um, head out to Marion, Ohio, there to the Isla Grande um, auction site. Weather's warming up, so right. I mean, it's a beautiful time. I mean, I'm not sure how Ohio weather is, but <laughs> well, it's supposed to rain here on Friday, so it won't be raining out there yet. So it will be a few days. But it'll nonetheless, be... it'll be warmer. It won't. Oh be cold. yeah, uh, anything is better than what we've had. Um, I feel like we should probably like send our blessings and our prayers out to the state of Nebraska, yeah, and even here sure. in part of Missouri, it's not been a good situation no. here in the last week or so. So, um, you know, prayers to you guys, and we hope everything's going okay. If there's anything that we can do to help any of you guys, yeah, for just, sure, just let, let us, let us know. know. Um, I haven't, you know, really rallied around and got anything started for them. But if anybody has an idea or wants our help to do any of that, we're more than welcome. Um, of course, then we have um, Kennedy Ventures, a little busy to die down in Oklahoma. Kennedy Ventures and C3 probably busy yes, down um, in yes, Oklahoma. Yes, yeah, C3's been making all kinds of banners. And, of course, Blake's got the CCI.live and the, the what are they called? Night the, of the, the Stars. Night of the Stars guilt sales. So we'll talk about that at the very end. Um, but... It's pretty awesome. I, I would love to go down to OIE some year, yes. maybe one day. Maybe next year we'll take a trip down there. Yes. When we, and we can see Kate and Blake. All at the same time. And probably, like, I think the Alicia of <laughs> the Titan Six will be down there next year, too. So I feel like all kinds of stuff going on at once. So anyways, we like I said, we couldn't do any of this without the sponsor. So thank you guys so much for always being the best. Oh. And believing in us. And not, like, laughing at us every week. Oh, no, I'm sure they, they might. They might. So... But Mary, here's your deal. Yeah, so you guys may have seen it on Facebook. I know a lot of you have, and we appreciate all of the um, the participation in it. And yes. uh, I th we think it's going over really well. We hope you guys think so too. Right. Um, but we posted the bracket in the first four rounds. Um, was Kiss My Socks against Black Attack, Hillbilly Bone versus Mountain Man, Bone Thug versus Super Monster, and Fatal Attraction versus Superman. Um, so we'll be going into round two tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow starting at noon. Round yes, two. and I think we're going to try and do a Facebook poll this time. Yes, so sorry, that was my easier. bad. That was my bad. I, I kind of started that deal, and I didn't think it was going to show up right. I thought it was going to show the little pictures itty bitty, and I was like, oh, nobody's going to look at that stuff. And so Mary showed me. She's like, no, that's not the way that But works, this is so. why we're doing it now, so we can do a trial run for what's to come this uh, fall. So Yeah, we have some cool things we'll playing do. this fall. But like, we're over like 500 votes at this point in time yeah. on this first round. And so... You guys, tell us, do you guys have your predictions of, you know, like, who's going to win this deal? Like, we've And if you one. like it, if you like this idea. Right. Um, we do have, we somebody has given us one prediction mm -hmm. of who they think is going to win. And so we would love to hear from the rest of you guys if you guys have anything. So chime in here with us and let us know. Um, um, I'm going to try to look at these comments. Who do you think will be at the very end? I have my theories. But. And like, this isn't all the crossword boards, obviously. We just randomly chose eight of out of the list that we had in right. no particular order and put them against each other. And, yeah, so. we did. I mean, like, obviously, like, there's a lot of great crossword boards out there. But just like in a bracket style thing, like, you have your number one seeds and you have your number mm -hmm. eight seeds and vice versa and stuff. But we also didn't want to use all of the big names the first right. time around. Cause so Because, like we said, we have something awesome planned this fall. Absolutely. So, um... Just bear with us, but like seriously, this is going over great. Oh, there we are. I was like, where are we at? <laughs> so now I can actually see your guys' comment. Um, we have Carrie and Jack joining us tonight. You guys are awfully quiet. Come on, guys. Um, we would love to have you guys here with us and to kind of, you know, give us your feedback. Yeah. But this board madness thing has gone really, really well, yeah. and I, I, I hope that somebody chimes in what they think that's gonna. 
you know, who's going to be in the final two. So, so keep participating, keep voting, yes. and watch for round two tomorrow on Facebook. And, and then we'll announce the, the semifinals probably on Sunday, and we'll allow that voting to go from Sunday to Wednesday, and then we'll announce the winner live on next week. Yeah. So it's going to be so awesome. Um, Nikki says hi. So Hello. thank you, Nikki, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, so should we get into the nuts and bolts of what yeah. we're doing tonight? I, so I you've probably seen in the Facebook post that we were talking about breed characteristics and breed character. There's been a ton of questions um, right. that we've had about it in the past, and so we we thought we finally touched on it. Um, and hopefully we're not too late for a lot of people, but right. Um, but I think no matter what point in time in the game we are, that it's always a good topic right. to cover. It's one that Logan and I did a long time ago, like back before we had a TV <laughs> and a computer. Like we had these little cards and we held them up and we did all kinds of silly things. But I feel like that we're hoping that this one's going to cover a lot of things. Um, Lori says hello. hello. Um, and then Lori, thank you for sharing. That reminds me, I should probably share this as well. Um, but all this information in the PowerPoint comes from CPS, NSR, and then all the breed associations. So if you want to go back to those websites and look at all this information, or if you want us mm -hmm. to send you the PowerPoint, just let us know afterwards and we can do that for you. And I'm going to throw out one thing. I, um, Mary did actually all this work this week, and she, unfortunately my, um, I, my computer doesn't have any Microsoft products on it, so she did it in PowerPoint. <laughs> and so I retyped it really quickly today. So if you guys really see a misspelled word back here behind me, please forgive me. Yeah, I, know there's at least, <laughs> I know there's at least three, but if you guys want us to send the PowerPoint, we'll make that get that fixed done to you because I, I told Mary when she got here I was like I'm sorry I didn't proofread any of that but um no like I said if you guys want this to share it with your FFA groups or your 4-H groups or just share it with your family we're more than happy to, yep. to send this over to you it's not a problem at all um Tyler's watching us so mm -hmm. yes it's gonna be a good night we're gonna have lots of things to talk about we do yeah so can you see that okay yeah, yeah. okay so all breeds breeding requirements yep goes across all of the breeds out there right um, the females actually not just females females breeding, and males yeah. yes have to have six uh, minimum of six quality teats on each side yep. it used to be they had to have 12 total so you could mm -hmm. have a seven and a five or whatever the situation was but nowadays it's six on six on each side mm -hmm. um, we do not count nipples or teats that are um, pin or inverted they were not accepted. Right. And then, of course, they have any extra duty calls. We don't do that either. Yep. Um, I feel like we should, you know, Which talk. is actually pretty common. It really is. And it's, it, it really is. And Max wants to come in, and he's probably going to raise hell. But we're, Lane's going to make sure he doesn't tip the camera <laughs> over. That's Lane's job, because Lane's back at the camera this week. Um, Max, please don't tip over the camera, buddy. But anyways, uh, no extra due calls. Um, I feel like this is a great point in time to talk about the NSR breeds versus CPS breeds and their stress status. NSRs. Yeah, NSR is, um, they all have to be stress negative. Um, and so is the Berkshires. As a matter of fact, on the Berkshires, it has to be printed on their pedigrees. Yep. Um, on the CPS breeds, on the Chesters, the Poland's, the Spots, they are allowed to be stress carriers. But again, before you can sell them in a national show, they do need to be stress tested. Mm -hmm. So at least the buyer knows for sure. Stress positive, completely out, yep. no questions asked. But they are allowed to be, um, you know, carriers on that, on the CPS thing. So you want to go over the market requirements? Yeah, so market requirements. Um, there are no underlying <coughs> requirements. So you can have a pig that has five on one side and mm -hmm. four on the other. Um, and then if there's any off-marked or off-belted pigs, they might they can show as market animals but not in breeding shows. Mm -hmm. So hams, if they have a black head, then they have right. to show in the market. Right. Um, That's a breed that does it the most, I think, is the yeah. Hampshire world. And we'll kind of cover that a little bit more when we get, get to the Hampshire breed itself. So these are just done in alphabetic order. They're in yep. the no preference to us. They're, we just did it the most logical way possible. So... Um, we're going to start off, like, when we talk about each breed, we're going to talk about their qualities, what they're kind of known for, um, and then we're also going to get into, like, their actual breed characters, like, yep. you know, like what things pass, which things don't pass, and so um, we're not going to sit here and tell you that we know every single rule. <laughs> Definitely There not. are so many breeds, it is impossible, like, I know a lot about Berkshires, and you know, I'm going to say Hampshires, I don't know if that's yeah. true, that's more <laughs> of a lame deal, but, like, we, we kind of both have our different, uh, you know, breeds that we kind of know a little bit more yeah. about, but if we have misspoke, or if you guys know more than we do, by all means, chime in, yeah. let us know, let's all learn from each other type situation. And feel so. free to go to the websites if you want to look at the full list of rules and mm -hmm. all the requirements for the shows. Um, I just took what I thought was the most important. The highlights. Yep. Because there's, there's so much information we can't possibly get it on one slide. Right. So you got your information from um, the National Pork, right? 
Um, some of it's from Port Checkoff. The rest is from CPS, NSR, and right. the Breed Association. So, so. That's, that's, those are our sources. So if you question what we have behind us, you probably need to get a hold of the, <laughs> those guys. So um, Ronnie says, uh, yeah, sorry, I looked at that, looked at that wrong. Berkshires. Berkshires, that's after my heart. <laughs> Um, so obviously the Berkshires are known for their meat flavor, their tenderness, the juiciness, and they're highly marbled. Mm -hmm. Um, Chase did a demonstration one time for 4-H that, um, we cooked some Berkshire pork right up against some pork that we had just bought at the grocery store. And the judges were like, we just like flash fried it on an electric skillet as fast as you can. Also, it's a timed event, so he didn't have all day long to cook this. And so I think it was like 400 and some degrees that he cooked it at because he had, had to have it done in like two minutes. It was super fast. But the judges were so surprised, yeah. even at cooking at that fast, at that height of the speed, about how tender and juicy that Berkshire meat was. And they could pick it out right, right off the bat. It's a highly flavored uh, pork. Right. It's kind of like I've always been told that it's like the, they consider it the Angus of so, the Porkshire yeah. world. The Porkshire world. The pork <laughs> world. And so that's what they're really known for. Like there's a lot of niche markets out there for the Berkshire yep. breed and selling it for just meat quality and things like that. So definitely have a love for that. Um, they're fast, very efficient growers, um, very fast. I showed a, a, a January gilt one time at the Missouri State Fair that was a reserve champion gilt down there, and she weighed 350 pounds. <laughs> and I promise you she wasn't pushed. She was eating just feed and steamrolled oats, and uh, she was a grower. I haven't fed very many Berkshires, but I do know that um, they can get chevy fronted really, really fast, so you do have to watch that and show pigs. Um, right. You might know a little bit about one of these Berkshire gilts on here, though. <laughs> We'll get to her in just a second. So um, generally they're all black bodies with uh, white on their lower legs and the tip of their nose and the tip of their tail with erect ears. So um, with that being said, the Berkshires have white or six white points um, and I think you have to have four of those six white points. So obviously we most of the time we clip tails and so that's why they give you four instead of five. Um, so um, they kind of like, we, we know that we do that in the, the show world so that's why there's four instead of five. Um, can't have any white skin or hair that consistently circles the body anywhere between the base of the ear to the base of the tail, aka a belt. A belt. Yep. yep, we don't want any belted hogs, and that count goes for not just their skin, but their hair coloring yep. as well. If it goes all the way around the body, it's not going to work. And I could be wrong, but please check the ABA website, but if they have a white spot that's bigger than a sheet of paper, so at 8.5 by 11, it's not okay. But that rule just changed a year or so ago, and so I don't want to say for 100% sure. But if you guys have a question about how much white your Berkshire has, go check out the ABA website, and they'll have all the, yes. the complete rules just there. Just make so. sure and double check, because you don't want right. to get to that show and then get right. qualified. And of course, if you guys ever have any questions about the way your, your hog's colored or one that maybe you're thinking about purchasing, don't be afraid to call the associations. That's why they're there. Like mm -hmm. Alex would be more than happy to sit there and visit with you about you know, the coloring of a pig, even you send me a picture, and I can say that about, you know, you know, Jack Wall and Jeff Morris with the CPS, and then also, I'm sure, I, I'm sorry guys, I'm not a C, an SR <laughs> girl, so I can't even name you off any names over that way, but, but it, you know, seriously, that's what those guys are there for, that's what their job is, so don't ever, ever hesitate to use the resources that we yeah. have available to us. Um, Chad says hi from Southern Illinois. Hello. Chad watches quite a bit, so thanks for joining us tonight. Um, and again, we talked about this a second ago, that the Berkshires have to be stress negative. Like stress positives are not okay. And it can be a reason for your, uh, your, your pedigrees to be pulled actually. So make sure that you're breeding stress negative hogs. I know that this could be a hot topic because there's been some Berkshire boars. Um, there was one named Sasquatch that sold, I believe at um, Duncan or Belton a couple years ago, D Duncan that actually ended up showing as a crossbred boar. Um, there was a couple reasons why. He was a few days older than the age requirements for that particular show, and also he carried a stress carrier uh, status. And so they had him show as a crossbred, but that boar goes ahead and wins uh, reserve champion crossbred and ends up going to Crossroads, or, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I was questioning Crossroads or up for hand, but um, he ends up going to stud, um, has made some great babies, but of course, anytime you breed to him, you're going to have to stress test mm -hmm. the whole entire litter. And so I'm not knocking that boy. Like he's done some great things for the show pig world, to the Berkshire world. And so, but just be cautious about that when you guys are entering into this deal. Um, and then also this is one that a lot of people don't know, but yeah. a burr cannot have any swirls in the upper half of their body. So like swirls around their jowls, um, swirls around the underline. Those are acceptable. Those are common. But just not anywhere on the upper half of the And when we say swirls, it's a swirl in the hair. Yes. Um, I know some people probably are like, what's it's a like swirl? It's like a cowlick. It's yeah, like a cowlick. I mean, um, I've seen a Berkshire Gelt here not too long ago. 
that had one right there at her um, ham loin junction, and it was, it was like a perfect circle in her hair. But it looks like a calic. It does. And no matter what you do to it, you're not going to change the way that that's going to be there. Yeah, it's going to be there. You can think you can clip them as short as you want to, but it's still very noticeable and it's still going to be there. So, anyways, just watch out for that. You guys have any questions? Please stop us. We yeah, have, feel free to ask at any time. We have like nine more breeds to go through. So, <laughs> Chester White, a breed that I don't know much about. And neither do I, but um, they're known for their mothering ability, soundness, and durability. Uh, a lot of commercial breeders and packers love the breed because of their muscle quality and white skin. Um, and I know anywhere you go, uh, commercial wise, they usually mm -hmm. have Chesters in their herd. Right, they always have a Chester influence. Somewhere. White hair is yep. favorable. Um, they generally produce large litters. I'm not so sure if that goes with the show pig world or not. Probably I think more on the commercial side. I think they could be saying the thing about, like, there's going to be lots of times we say that, like, I don't know if yeah. this really applies to the show pig world, but just in general, the way that the breed was based mm -hmm. and the way it was kind of marketed, so. Uh, they're generally all white bodies with no color on the skin, larger than a silver dollar, and they cannot have any colored hairs, um, so no black hairs or anything like that. Um, any signs of pigmentation other than white that exceeds five in number are disqualified, and then as everybody knows, Chesters have uh, floppy ears, so they must be down and broke. Any signs of weighted ear tags or evidence of past existence of such ear tags will be dis disqualified, and I know a lot of people are like, who would do that? But um, if happens. you have... A really good white crest but I'm sure there's people out there who try to do that um, but and I'm not trying to pick on the southern boys but since they don't have to have pedigrees to show at some of those right. Texas majors and their counties and their district fairs like sometimes it happens maybe down south a little bit more than it does here in the north but we kind of have an example um, this is actually a, a Chester boar we didn't talk about that with the Berkshire guilt but that's okay um, they cross this is a Chester um, boar that's actually about to go into he is in stud um, at a new stud that's going to be housed there in Iowa that has an excellent ear set and he you know possesses all the qualities that you could possibly think of when it comes to a chester and i'm not for sure whose chester guilt this is and i'm not picking Google. on her by not yeah right and i'm not picking on her and saying anything bad about the breeder but she doesn't necessarily have the best ear set and that does seem more common nowadays mm -hmm. um when you get into chester shows um mm -hmm. not all of them are i consider these floaty ears like, if yeah. you let her drive with her head down, her ears probably flop over a little bit more. But the second her head goes up, the ears They're go back. They're not completely blind. Right. Um, she can see really well. <laughs> and I, I understand that this girl has her head up, and so that changes the ear set yep. just a little bit. But like I said, you know, if you can look between the two slides, the or the two pictures, the, the Chester boar by far has a better ear set than the Chester guilt does. Yep. And like I said, I don't know who the breeder is. I don't want to know who the breeder is because it's nothing judging them right. at all. So we'll probably see that about every slide. Yeah, these pictures are just to show, you know, differences <laughs> right. in, in a breed. Right. We're not we're not picking on anybody. So we just try to show an example. And some of them it was hard to find examples of ones that maybe right. are not less desirable. So um this one for example, like I couldn't find one yeah. really of a Duroc that was less desirable. But um Durocs are known for their carcass leanness and feed efficiency, fast growth, overall product quality. Um, they are also known for meat quality as well. Um, females are known for their long, uh, longevity. Um, the second most recorded breed in the U.S. Um, they must be red in color and not, uh, may not have any white hair or black hairs. Oh my gosh, there's another typo. <laughs> this is kind of fun to read back on this because like, I see things now. Anywhere on the body. And if they do, they cannot have any more than three black spots. I know that kind of sounds contradictory because we're saying no black hairs. They can have a darker pigmented right. skin, but that with skin red hair. with red hair um, on the skin, and none of the spots may be larger than um, two inches in diameter. So just kind of like I, I've seen a Duroc Barrow this weekend sell actually that had, and I wouldn't call it a black spot. It was just a dark, darker pigmented spot on him, and you know it, it's just completely legal. Yep. But he still had red hair over that dark pigment skin. So. And there's many different pigments of red and oh, color yes. that the Duroc can be. It can be dark. It can be light. It can be in between. And it doesn't matter. It just has to be red. Right. Absolutely. Um, and again, our ears need to be down. Um, yeah. Again, we probably fight a little. I don't notice it so much in the Duroc breed as I do some other ones, like maybe the Herefords and the Chesters, yep. but. Um, ears definitely need to be down, completely broke over. Um, even though we don't have it on here, I'm sure there's just any evidence of waiting on the ears that it's right. you know highly disfavored and things like that. So um, I've not raised many Durocs in my life. I've had a couple litters of them. Um, I know that they wean really funny. 
I, I've never had the rock. <laughs> they, they go through this woolly mammoth stage, and I was like, oh my god, what happened? I was going to say, I feel like when you wean them, they get really fuzzy looking. They Way do. Way more than any other breed of pig. They do. And so I my heart goes out to all the draw <laughs> fanatics out there that, you know, breed them heavily because, like, you know, more power to you guys because you guys, it's rough. But I, maybe it was just me. Maybe it was just the letters I had. I don't know. It was not fun, though. Oh, the Hampshire's. Hampshire's. <laughs> um, so you can tell there's a lot of writing, and the pictures are really small for a reason. So, Mary, I'm going to let you have the Hampshire breed. The Hampshire you world is kind of controversial this. right now. Um, hopefully, we'll have someone on here next week to kind of touch on it, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, we'll just talk what's on the slide. So they're known for their lean muscle, high carcass, m minimal back fat, and large loin eyes. Uh, the females are known for longevity and mothering ability. Um, and like we said earlier, in the show pig world, it might be different because I know a lot of people have a hard time raising lit big litters in right. New Hampshire's and the South sometimes aren't the greatest mothers. Um, but again, in the commercial side, it may be different. Uh, they're black in color with a white belt totally encircling the body, including both front legs and feet. Um, so you guys may know them as the belted hog. Uh, market Hampshire's may be eligible if it has a black head and white body, so that's what we talked about in the very first right. slide. You can show them in market classes mm -hmm. um, as if you're wearing a, well, it would be a market class, but uh, with a black head and a white body. You can do that. Uh, they do have erect ears and no white hairs are streaking on the forehead. Um, they may not have any red hairs on the body. They can have white on the nose, though, as long as it doesn't go over the rim. Red. Um, and when its mouth is closed, the white under the chin cannot exceed the size of a quarter. White is allowed on the back legs as long as it does not extend above the hawk. So um, it cannot go over here. And I was gonna—I tried to find a picture, but the only ones I could find, unfortunately, were crossbreds, and I didn't want to confuse people. Yep. But and I know that it's pretty common in the Hampshire world, and a lot of people do have questions on that, and like, how high can the white go up on the back legs? Yeah, and it is—it cannot go above the hawk. Right. Um, off belts may be used for breeding purposes and have eligible offspring, but off belts can only be shown in market classes, like we said before. Right. Yep, that's why we have this picture of this black headed sow here. Um, so she's clearly not belted at all. Mm -hmm. But her babies, even though she's a registered hamp and, like I said, she's not belted, but her babies are still eligible for full registration. Yep, you can um, register her. Right. Well. Yep, and if her, you know, if she was a barrow, you could still show that barrow at a national show um, with a pedigree and show it as a purebred Hampshire. Yep. But you just can't show it in a breeding class. So right. the Hampshire world is a little bit different when that comes to that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, we all know we're not going to get into the purity topics no. tonight. Um, there was a huge NSR meeting today. I'm anxious to see what kind of came out of that, if there's any of this stuff was talked about. But um, anyways, um, we I also have a picture of this girl here because you can tell, and this is not maybe the best example, but I tried to find one that would show up, that her belt isn't super prominent. Like you can see where she has really prominent white skin. And then maybe the belt that goes across to her is actually dark pigment with white hair over the belt. That still counts, but the white hairs have to connect. They have to touch, yeah. Right, they have to make a full circumference around her body. Um, somebody says that we breed Jurox and their hair is coarse and they've had um, hairs puncture the skin of my arms. Wow. See, yeah, that, I'm just not, I'm just not good with the Jurox. And I'm sorry, I can't get the rest of that comment to come up. So, um, but yeah, they just go through that funky the stage. <clears throat> Every time I hit the see more, it, it asks me to like the comment or. Nope. Nope. So All we right. apologize, we can't see the rest of your comments. Right, but yeah, I'm gonna like if you guys can see it, you guys can you know help chime in there. But um, yeah, that direct feels <laughs> different, and the Hampshire is too. Like the Hampshire is probably the most unique, and they probably have the outside of the Herefords have the most rules when it comes to coloring. So if you guys have any questions, again, you can try to get a hold of us. Or I should say try. You guys can get a hold of us. Yeah. And if we don't know the answer, we'll get a hold of people, or you guys are always welcome to get a hold of the NSR to, uh, to go over that as well. And then here's Thank the Hereford. Thank you, the Hereford Queen. I don't know about the Hereford Queen. Um, we made this look really easy on this slide, but the Hereford, and this is like one of the hottest topics, like the Hereford people will argue to the day is long about the coloring of a hog. Um, so we're just going to, and I'm not saying that one hog is colored perfectly and one hog is colored wrong, because um, I will probably get blasted by all the Hereford Nation people out there. But um, they're deep in red in color um, with, with white on their head, their ears, and four white legs. Whether the underline is red or white is the breeder preference, so it doesn't matter. That's why this picture is being used. Mm -hmm. White markings must go around all four feet, so you can't just have like half of a leg that's white. It has to go, the white has to go all the way around. 
Um, the body must be at least two thirds red and um, there shall be no white over the back beyond the shoulder blade with the exception of a splash or a drip with no connecting belt on the body. So a lot of times this happens in the Hereford world where they are belted and the belts are not okay. Um, face must be two thirds white. This is always a controversial topic. Um, um, even on the belt um, in the white past the shoulder blade, it's always like, where is that exact fine point at? Mm -hmm. And then again, with the face two thirds white, are the ears included in that? Are the ears not included in that? Like, it, it's always a, a huge topic. Um, the ears must be broke forward. Um, these, I've seen pictures of the earlier Herefords and they're not maybe as broke as much as some of them are in these two pictures, but just make sure that they're broken eared. Yeah, um, well, and like we mentioned with the Chesters earlier, they, they, they get do. floaty. Yeah, and yeah, honestly, floaty. yeah, the, and the, honestly, that's the way the Herefords kind of started out with was maybe with the more of a float of an ear, but over time we've expected them to get heavier. So, um, and Nani, yes, I will get to that in just a second. And I'm glad that Nani is here. So that um, ears do not count on the white face. And she also says that um, that three out of the four have to be white. You can, you're can you allowed to have one dark leg. Um, it's kind of like back to the Berkshire rule where you have to, you have so many white points and you have to have so many of them in order to qualify. Um, so Nani, is it uh, on the Herefords, is it the same as the Berkshires where you have to have four of those three things or three of the four, or I shouldn't say four of the six white points? Because um, I, I really feel like the phases and the, the Herefords are more important than it is on the Berkshire side mm -hmm. of things. But um, they're allowed no more than five black spots larger than a 50 cent piece or one black spot larger than four inches. I'm going to say I've never seen that. Yeah, it's a pretty big black spot if it's larger than four inches. Right, and I, I, I said I've never seen a Hereford with a, a black spot. I don't think spot. I have either. So I've seen another ray we're going to talk about here later on that have some black spots on it that I was actually surprised about when I you know read this. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I did not know that rolling. Yep. Don't know that's followed the best, but yep. um, yeah, that Herford thing. Like I said, that there um, there are so many conversations about how they are marked and how they are colored. Again, and that probably goes with any breed that oh, has yes. color. Yes. So again, if you have any questions, talk to the CPS. They are now the head of the Herford deal. Just joined that about a year, year and a half ago. And so if you have any questions, yep, you can go to their website. There's a whole tab over Herefords and then right. there's even more tabs that go more into depth with right. the Herefords. So go check it out and right. the full list of rules and details is there. Yeah. And if you want the history of Herefords, that's there as well. Yeah. Um, do, I don't feel um, like that people use the association websites near enough, near enough because like there's every rule or every guideline or history or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you want to have on those websites. So highly encourage you guys to go check those guys out so don't forget the pork checkoff also i didn't right, know and see, they have a lot of interactive things for younger kids on their website that i did not know about uh i think it was pork checkoff um i'm sure but go check out those websites they have a lot of useful information and a lot of interactive things on there um that right. don't get talked about a lot right and pork checkoff i mean they're obviously the largest sponsor of team purebred and the ngsa and so like i'm sure that they have a lot of interactive stuff to talk about um the skill of thons and taking mm -hmm. things like that. So a huge, huge resource that Wally well, doesn't get enough credit a lot of times, but yep. the hu if it wasn't for that, the port check off, um, those two junior associations probably would not exist. So huge shout out to those guys. Land race, land race. your turn. Uh, I don't know much about land races. I've never been around them, um, but females are known for being heavy milkers. Uh, this breed can add length of body to your herd and possesses a high amount of carcass weight in their ham and loins. They're an all-white breed with floppy ears and can have no black hairs on their body whatsoever. Um, can they, they can have they can have no more than three spots of skin pigmentation allowed. Allowed, uh, allowed. <laughs> none of which may be bigger than a U.S. quarter. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, "How do you tell a Chester and a Land race?" So I both always told the Yorkshires like this, and Chesters like this, and a Land race is like this. I was gonna say, uh, I think Land races have a lot bigger ears. Yes, a lot bigger, even heavier than. Them. Than yeah. what a Chester is. Yep, and to me, I, I think they have a little bit longer nose mm -hmm. as well. Yep, a longer face, um, absolutely. But sometimes they're so good, it's hard to tell. Right, um, right. But yeah, I'm, I don't know much about land races. And I, I honestly don't either. Um, Chase showed a land race gill for a few months, during, a couple of years ago, but that's the only land race that I've ever really been around. Um, I know in the show world that sometimes we battle their back legs a little bit and their front shoulders, um, but. As far as, again, in the commercial operations, they like to use that a lot because they're known for the heavy milking mm -hmm. abilities. And um, I think they're also known for large litters. So I think that they're used quite a bit in the crossbred world of 
the commercial side of things. So, oh, Poland China is another mm -hmm. little CPS breed here. Um, they're known for their large frame, their length of body, leanness, and muscle. Um, they feed really well. Um, they're marked a lot like a Berkshire with a floppy ear, so they have bar, uh, black bodies, must possess six white points. Again, they forgive the white tip on the tail because they know that they get clipped. Um, feet and tail switch um, and with floppy ears may not possess, oh my gosh, I, I should run this back, um, more than um, one solid black leg. So again, they're exa just like the, the Berkshires where they need a four of those six white points. And um, may not have any belt uh, formation or white skin encircling or touching the shoulder, no red or sandy uh, hair pigment, and hogs that have weighted ears or evidence of tampering of the ears will be ineligible mm -hmm. for a show. So again, sometimes those ears get a little floaty. Um, sometimes that, that, that we have two great examples of ear sets on both of these guys. But if you were maybe a true Poland enthusiast, you might think the this guy here has a little bit more too much white up on his front neck and maybe on his belly. I don't think he's excessive, but I couldn't no. find a good example of one that was super excessive. So, and the same thing with the Berkshire <laughs> world. Um, there's going to be a lot more white marks on some right. of them, um, but it doesn't make them any less right. eligible. Right. Like I said, like it goes all back to the rule. Like it used to be like just even a few years ago, that rule changed on the Berkshire side of things that like maybe the guilt that you showed last year would have been less desirable mm -hmm. because of the white that she had. But now that they've gone in and they've changed the rule and it says as long as the white spot's not bigger than a sheet of paper, and eight and a half by 11, then it's it's okay. So again, check out the rules on the ABA website. No, oh, spots. Becky's favorite breed. Well, it's Chase's favorite breed. I'll take the Berkshires, but Chase loves the spotted pigs. Um, known for their feed efficiency, the rate of gain, the carcass quality, um, must be black and white. Any red or brown uh, spots are ineligible. Um, no white belt pattern that encompasses the back one third of both shoulder blades and extends down to the forearm. Um, the belt pattern is uh, completely, uh, the belt is not completely broken by black. The exception for this, uh, to this rule is predominantly white bodied individuals with a white face. Um, which is, I, I don't have, I've never seen like what I've thought is a belted spot. Right. Ever I, have I seen that? But we have a, you know, a picture one here that is predominantly white. And then I was going to post one that was predominantly black, but I didn't, I know that the board that I was going to use is very well known and I didn't want to um, cause any problems for the, the, the owner of that guy. But I mean, blacks can, I mean, spots are getting like, they yeah. can't have a lot of black on them anymore. Are. And sometimes you question whether they're a Poland or a spot, but, um, they, uh, no solid black head from the ears forward, floppy ears, oh my, floppy eats, floppy ears again, any signs of weighting them down will lead to disqualification. So, and like, like you said, spots are getting really black these days. And like, when you're looking on some, on, some of these online sales, you're scrolling through and you're like, man, is that a Poland or a spot? And you really have to go and look at the description. And, right. Um, that's just one of those things, I guess. Right. right. Tam Tamworth. Tamworth. We're, neither one of us said anything about a Tam. <laughs> nope. Um, they're getting bigger and bigger, it seems like, or at least yeah. here in the state of Missouri. Um, yeah. they have their, no, they're not, they don't have their own, Herford's got their own class last year, but Tam still shows AOB. Um, I would say in the next three or four years in Missouri, yeah. they'll have their There's own class. There's a lot in Missouri. Um, the general color should be red. At no time shall there be more than 5% black hair on any hog. Um, and again, any, I know they said deep red is, more, oh, ginger red yeah. color to dark color is favored. Um, a coat of dark brown or black is slightly disflavored, disfavored and may be penalized <laughs> in the ring. Oh my gosh, my typing on this deal was bad. Um, yeah, any animal with white appearing anywhere on the body except for the hooves, um, but including the feet, will not be eligible for show and will not will uh, cannot be will be registered. So, um, black or dark spots, speckling or pinpricks should be not should not be penalized, but black spots are disfavored. Um, no animal may show as a tamworth if it has more than 20 black spots or of hair or a, or larger than a dime or any one spots larger than four inches by four inches. That's is the part that I was really yes. surprised about. I did not know the 20 spot rule. I did not either until I found it on the tamworth website. Um, I'm not sure that that rule is followed as much as it should be. No, because I, I see a lot of them a lot of times that have more than 20 right. spots and I'm not going to be the, the Tamworth police by any means. I mean, like um, that's not where, where jobs are or anything else, but I was just surprised that that was one of the rules because I had, and we do have that. a picture that has some black spots, um, but not 20. Um, right. And that's, that is okay. As long as it's not bigger than four by four. Um, right. 
And the other guilt that we have is like, I don't see any black spots on her and yeah. that's completely fine too. Mm -hmm. So one is not better than the other just because right. this one has black spots and this one doesn't, doesn't mean that the, the one without the spots is better than the other one. So the, the Tamworth breed is definitely growing like it wildfire. Is. Tams I mean, and Herefords, they feel like are getting really big. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like we should give a shout out to Peyton Hill for the Tamworth, you know, explosion yep. that we've had in the U.S. Uh, she's been raising some good ones, and so she's got a, definitely an eye for them. So, yeah. Yorkshire. Yorkshires. Go for it. Uh, they're found in almost every state in the U.S., which I thought was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, known for their muscle, soundness, and durability. Uh, must be white in color with erect ears. They may not have more than two pigmentation spots larger than a dime. Or one spot larger than a quarter. The pigmentation spots combined may, may be no longer than a, larger than a silver dollar. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> She's reading exactly what I have typed here, so I apologize for that. And you do see a lot of Yorks, and I we call them moles or uh, right. freckles, um, but it's not super common, um, and it's not that big of a deal unless you have more than two. Right. Uh, right. But don't freak out if your white hog has a spot. Right. So let's open this up to your guys' questions. You guys are kind of being a little quiet tonight. I know there's some questions out there. We got one today on Facebook that says, who's ultimately responsible for policing these breed characteristics? I think first and foremost, it should start with the breeders. Yep. Um, us as breeders, we should be making sure that we're only selling the, the eligible hogs. Or at least letting people know if they're not eligible right. for something. Right, because um, I have sold some county fair pigs that I heard for litter last year that was had too much dark on them. Um, but the buyers were very aware of that situation. And, you know, like for most cutting fairs, that situation still works. So, you know, if a cutting fair judge isn't probably going to jump up and down about a mismarked hog. But um, just you have to let your buyers be known. Yep. Um, I think part of it falls on the buyers, too. Like, yep. you be educated is about what you're buying and what you're getting into. Because it's not always, mm -hmm. uh, it's part of this is your responsibility as well. Um, and when you go to a national show, um, you're going to have breed reps and your board of directors, directors there, especially for, um, for both the junior and the open show, the junior show is a little bit different. There'll be a certain period of time where you can't remove your hogs from the pen. So the breed rep and your, um, a member of the board of directors can come around and classify those hogs and make sure that they're all following breed classifications correctly. Um, during the open show pro uh, part of it, you're going to go through the scales, you're going to weigh and get scanned and all that good stuff. And then that's where they're going to check for the, the number of teats and the quality and then also for breed characteristics as well. So, um, I mean, it's a little bit of responsibility of all of us. Don't just assume you're going to go to a national show and if you have something that's mismarked or you have five teats on one side, don't expect it to go unnoticed. It's going to get noticed. Because it will get noticed at a national show. Right. Um, I, I saw last year at Hereford Guild at Expo that um, somebody was trying to get something by, and it didn't work. Um, I'm not going to talk about this topic too much because I'm sure it will get back to the people that were involved in that situation. But, like, don't try to make a hog something that's not going to – it's going to get noticed. I mean, absolutely 100% get noticed. And I've seen boars or in guilds that you can see where the nipple used to be, but for whatever reason it's been rubbed off or uh, it's just not existent anymore for whatever reason – but even though you can see where it was, it just still doesn't count. So no. even if there's a little scar there or whatever the case may be. So, but I don't want to put in all this responsibility on any one person because I no. feel like that it's, it's a it's a family affair. We all share responsibility in this whole breed characteristic mm -hmm. things, and you only buy what you're comfortable with. Right. You know, like Mary if may you be think more it's questionable. Make me think twice about buying that animal. Right. Because Mary may be more comfortable with something than I am, um, and vice versa. You know, like. Just buy within your comfort level, but just be educated before you go make that purchase. Um, because, and ask questions of your breeder. If you're questioning it, ask the questions because they should be able to help you answer and uh, kind of go from there. And so. really pay attention to those little details like the mm -hmm. Berkshires with the swirls. And I, Yorks are the same way, right? They can't have swirls? No, actually, it's not true. Because I, I, I showed a Berkshire, or Yorkshire last year that had a swirl. Okay. And we showed her at Expo, we showed her at the Missouri State Fair, and it was never once brought up. But it wasn't like we were trying to hide it. It was, uh, I mean, she had a swirl. But um, but just little details like that. Make sure you're paying attention when you go to buy things, mm -hmm. um, that you're not missing those things. Right, absolutely. So we were going to talk about, um, I haven't got any more questions. Like, you guys are at mute tonight or something. I don't know. But um, So we we're going to talk about Kennedy Ventures one more yeah. time. So, so we mentioned OIE is going on Night of the Star sales tonight. I think it's going on right now, actually. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, you can go over to cci.live.com and bid online if you're interested in any of those lots. Um, right. I know Blake does his best to uh, 
make it to where everybody, if you can't make it to OIE, that you can bid online. Right. Um, and make it more convenient for you guys. Right. So that's what Mary and I are getting ready to do. We're going to mm -hmm. jump on the cci.live.com and watch that um, OIE sale happen. And uh, I guarantee you that I won't be putting Blake to work tonight. Um, Um, so yes, on the underlying situation, like they do want a uniform underlying. So even though you have six on six on each side, yes, you technically pass qualifications. Mm -hmm. You're going to be allowed to show. But if they have pin nipples, it, it is an undesirable trait. Mm -hmm. So if there's like your, you know, a judge is really close for first and second and yours has a pin nipple and the other one doesn't, the one without the pin nipple will, will probably always yep. win. Cause they want a uniform they want the the, the teats or the nipples i don't know what we're supposed to call them which is politically correct or not but but there should be side by you know side by side um i don't know vertically horizontally i don't know which direction that is evenly spaced on both sides yep and i actually tried to google pictures for to find an underline that looked like this but don't google it because you won't find it is i'm sh i would hate to see what you got <laughs> when you googled this it was probably not not awesome. pigs we'll <laughs> not say pigs. that <laughs> So, but yes, I mean, it does really matter if they're, they're pin nipples or inverted nipples, yep. even though they have the six and six. Yes, you will qualify, but it is undesirable to have yep, pin nipples. Yep, because when you go to put that uh, pig in the crate. So that it never, it never fails that you have a pin nipple. They're not going to produce milk. That's why they're not accepted. But it never seems to fail that a biggie pig will find that one yep. to go to try to nurse <laughs> off of, and it doesn't work. Yep. So that's why they're not desirable. So... Um, yes, it, you definitely need to pay attention to the underlines mm -hmm. and how they're spaced. You also don't want a, a short space between them and you don't want a large space between them either. Right. Obviously, again, for breeding purposes because mm -hmm. those baby pigs are like programmed when they come out yeah. about how far apart they should be from each other. It's almost like they should be able to touch shoulders mm -hmm. before the next one starts. And so like, they can feel brother or sister over here and then they, they know they should, they should be here. So. Yep, because at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for is to make our breeding programs better. So Right, absolutely. So I feel like this went well. Again, if you guys have any questions or you guys want this PowerPoint, I promise you I'll fix the, the 20 dozen. <laughs> it's so typos. bad. Typos in here. Like I'll, I'll fix the, the flavored and I'll fix the, oh my gosh, there's so many of them. But um, I, I would have no problem sharing this with anybody if you guys are interested in it and you guys want to kind of go over the same information with your 4-H club or your FA chapter or just as a family. Um, yeah. yeah, we're more than happy to well, share. Well, like I said, it's all on CPS, NSR, and then the separate breed associations pages. Um, and the port checkoff. So, and like yeah. I said, some of those websites get underused. So go check Absolutely. them out. Absolutely. Yeah. And don't be afraid to call the breed reps. Like yeah. That. They would love to visit. They love to visit with people. I mean, some of them I know are really busy. They'd be happy to help you out. So just be patient with them if you're trying to get a hold of them. I mean, definitely during baby pig season, it's a, it's a tough time that their phone goes off all the time. But um, next week, I'm super excited. We have a guest yeah. star next week. We do. Um, I'm hoping that maybe we can talk about some of the things we haven't talked about a little bit in a very fashionable sense. Yep. And I think that we have a really good person to kind of talk about some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, guys, give us your predictions on the Battle of the, the Board Madness. The Board Madness, I yes. I called it Battle of the Board. Watch on board Facebook for the next, second round. Tomorrow at noon. Mm -hmm. We've already got some of that stuff ready to go, and I'm going to try this poll thing and again. And we, we also forgot to talk about the lucky ones. Oh, we did. Yeah, so this thing happened last weekend. This big thing. Yes, it was awesome. Um, it's, it's the largest sale in the state of Missouri, and we had um, some of the best-known breeders in the Midwest and from Texas, and it was so amazing. It was awesome. It was a um, good sale. Thank you, guys. Like, yes. you guys showed up. Yeah, there was people from Oregon, Kentucky, and South Dakota right. here in Missouri, um, and some of them were there because they watched Bacon Tonight. So, so thank you guys yes. so much. And thank I you. thank you guys that you had and, you know, was brave enough to come up and say something to us because, like, it almost brought me to tears. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like, there's no way. Like, that was so humbling to me and so awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching and paying attention. Um, you know, we get, you know, questions submitted to us quite often and people usually ended up with um you know how much they love us and you know whatever else it without you guys like and without these sponsors behind us like none of this would be possible so thank you guys so much for being awesome and yeah. we're just going to keep doing this we're going to get a better setup we're going to spend some of rusty's money and uh you know it's the way it happens but the only gonna, way is up the uh, only way is up and so we can't do this without your guys' ideas or suggestions or anything mm -hmm. else so please send those in to us and don't ever be afraid that's how tonight happened yep. and that tomorrow or tomorrow tomorrow is gonna be awesome too but next week is gonna be pretty cool pretty exciting yeah. so and he's the person that um, most people will know yeah or at least heard of so yeah um, tune in next week 
It's well, gonna be a good one. Yeah, we'll announce that probably on uh, Monday. Yep. So, but anyways, till then, see you guys next week. Yeah. Yeah. So enjoy spring. Yes, it's finally here. Spring has sprung. Yes, finally, finally. So dry out Nebraska, dry out Missouri. Mm -hmm. We wish you guys the best. In Iowa. In Iowa, right. <laughs>